Welcome to MFTB Sports Channel. And if you're new to our channel, then welcome. And if you're an existing subscriber, then welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to ask the question, is Roberto De Zerbi overrated? Now, as we know, Roberto De Zerbi has taken over at French club Marseille after leaving Premier League club Brighton and Hove Albion. And it's always been a sticking question that I've always had with the coach. Is that, is he a bit overrated? Because to be totally honest with you, I've never really taken to him during his time in the Premier League. And in my opinion, the move over to Marseille, no offence to the French club, kind of proves that the level where he is as a coach at this moment. But let's rewind a little and go through his coaching career. And then we'll end up back where we are now and what I think of my personal opinions of him. So in September 2016, he took on his first senior coaching role with Italian club Palermo. And unfortunately, his first taste of management wasn't as successful one as he only lasted three months at the club, as in November 2016, he was sacked. And during his short stint at Palermo, he had seven consecutive defeats and no points at home. In October 2017, he took his next step into coaching by taking over Serie A newcomers Benevento. Where here, despite being relegated back to Serie B, he did impress everyone with his possession-based football style. His next stint in management was a three-year period in charge of Italian club Sassuolo. And here again, his management style and football style was praised. And also, he led the club to two consecutive top eight finishes. But in May 2021, he decided to call time on his career at Sassuolo and ended up leaving the football club. His next stop in May 2021 was to take over at Ukrainian club Shakhtar Donetsk, where in his short period of time he did manage to win the Ukrainian Super Cup. But unfortunately here he had to leave the club at the top of the league due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And so in July 2022 his time came to an end at Shakhtar Donetsk. And it was in September 2022 that really in the UK we got familiar with his work as he was announced on a four-year contract as the new manager of Brighton and Hove Albion replacing Graham Potter. And his first season in the Premier League really started attracting admiring glances from the clubs above him as he managed to get the club into seventh and their first ever European qualification. In his second season in charge of Brighton, this is where you really started seeing the cracks in the relationship with the board though, as the club ended the season in 11th place in the table and way out of European contention, which is a step back from the season before. But also, Roberto De Zerbi over several periods criticised the club and also kept reiterating that he wanted his desires and successes to be replicated by the club. It was then revealed at the end of the season on the eve of the last game that Roberto De Zerbi and Brighton had mutually agreed to part ways. And it's believed that this was based over the fact that there was multiple times that he criticised the club about their transfer policy, even though that he knew this is the way things were in the club as he's very analytics driven and also finding young gems. And so with the constant criticisms of the club's transfer strategy, this is what's believed to have made the club and the manager decide to part ways as they could no longer work together. And to bring us up to date, it's now been announced that his next club is Marseille in League One in France. And so this really takes us to my own thoughts and my own personal opinions. And I've never really been that much of a fan of him. I thought during his two years in charge of Brighton that he constantly came across in the interviews as very grumpy. And even despite the successes that he had at the club, there always seemed to be some kind of criticism levelled at either the board or the players in the dressing room. I know that he comes across as a very ambitious manager and he makes it very clear that he's got long term plans for his career. But within the parameters of a club like Brighton, it makes me wonder what he was really expecting. Especially during his second season in charge of the club. It's almost as though qualifying for Europe in the first season, he expected some kind of an open checkbook. Brighton's whole philosophy of getting transfers into the club is by finding young gems out there in the foreign market, polishing them up so that they end up going up in value and proving their value to the club, and then selling them on at a huge profit so they can be reinvested into the academy. It seems one of the things that really did rub him up the wrong way was the sale of Moises Caicedo to Chelsea, but he can't have been under any surprises and illusions of what was expected of him at the club. But I do think as we got towards the end of last season, he was making it more than clear that he wasn't keen on staying. Also, my personal opinion as well is the fact that I reckon because he'd been linked with so many other top jobs, maybe he was getting a little bit of delusions of grandeur. 
Certainly after his first season in charge of Brighton, a lot of people were even linking him with the Manchester City job to be the long-term successor to Pep Guardiola. And I think a lot of the Premier League clubs got a little bit bowled over by the hype train, as certainly during the last season he was linked with some high-profile jobs. He was linked with the Liverpool job to potentially replace Jurgen Klopp and did make the shortlist, whilst he was also linked with the Chelsea job to replace Maurizio Pochettino if at that time the decision was made for him to leave. As we know, the Liverpool job went to Arna Slot from Feyenoord and the Chelsea job went to Championship champion with Leicester, Enzo Maresca. He was also fleetingly linked with a move over to Manchester United, which seemed to be the most credible, to replace Eric Ten Hag, until Manchester United decided to pursue other targets like Kieran McKenna and Thomas Tuchel. Although, as we know, Manchester United did go on to extend Eric Ten Hag's contract until 2026. I was surprised though that he wasn't one of the managers that was offered the Bayern Munich job, even though there were several links. As Bayern Munich were really struggling to appoint a successor to Thomas Tuchel after he left at the end of the season. And yet despite all the multiple links with Bayern Munich and the fact that they were really struggling to find a replacement coach, Bayern Munich decided to choose the unknown with Vincent Kompany who had only just got relegated with Burnley. Another job that he was also linked with was Barcelona after they decided that the time was coming to the end with Xavi, but they even chose Hansi Flick and De Zerbi wasn't even in contention despite the press linking him with the job. And so that really kind of sums it up for me, is that why do the big clubs not really take a punt on him when there were so many big jobs available? And that kind of really proves my point. If there were so many big clubs looking for managers, I think they were looking at him and thinking that he was too argumentative and also too spiky. It may have been a completely different situation if these jobs were all available after his first season in charge and getting the club into Europe, but after his second season where he's been seen to be vocally criticising the board over their transfer strategy, and with his spiky attitude and the way that he seems to be quite argumentative with the board, I think a lot of clubs have avoided him. And so when it all shook out over the course of the summer, and all the manager positions were all getting filled up, he ended up getting left with Marseille. And as I said earlier, I don't mean to be disrespectful to Marseille, but if you're an up-and-coming manager and you're in charge of a successful and well-run mid-table Premier League club, that personally is a much higher level than a mid-table French club in a league that's dominated by one club, PSG. So personally, I think he'll need to do some kind of personal reflection because if he managed to free himself up two years early out of his Brighton contract in the hope of picking up one of the big European club jobs, he's kind of fallen flat on his face. Another reason why I find it a bit strange that he decided to go to Marseille is after his criticisms of the resources at Brighton. The resources in France generally are even more stretched. French football at the moment is at crisis point as it doesn't even have a TV deal for the upcoming season. And the club, as I said earlier, is dominated by one club, which is PSG. So all you're really going to be aiming for is the scraps behind PSG and the hope of some miracle of a decent cup run. And all of his criticisms that he had of Brighton of not really backing him and spending a lot of money, well he's going to have even less to spend at Marseille. And so if he was playing a calculated risk to make a sideways step so that he could go for a big continental job, I think he may have played a risk too far. Unfortunately now, if he does go on to have any kind of success in France, they'll just say, well it's because of the level of the league. And if it doesn't go well and he ends up falling out with the owners of Marseille, then that will just put a final nail in the coffin that other clubs won't be interested in taking him higher up the leagues. Personally, I think he made the wrong decision by moving over to the French League. And instead of jumping at this opportunity, maybe he should have waited a little bit longer to see if something came up in his domestic league in Serie A. Another potential job opportunity could have been a national team job after Euro 2024. And myself personally, I think him taking himself off to France has put him out of the spotlight of some of the biggest clubs in football. So in answer to my question and to summarise, yes, I do think Roberto Di Zerbi is overrated. It can't be denied that his clubs always have a fantastic playing style and high tempo, and that is very much in demand by the club owners nowadays. But with his miserable and sulky attitude that comes across in every interview and the way he comes across with clubs in that he always wants them to aim higher and higher even beyond their resources means for me that in the past 12 months he's put a real big question mark over his future managerial career. I have no doubt at some point that one of the biggest clubs in the world will probably take a punt on him 
But I just have a feeling that he's going to be another one of these managers like Jose Mourinho that's always going to end up in fireworks. And it's okay if you're Jose Mourinho to have these fireworks when you have the success behind you. But when you haven't really achieved that much in the game, can you really afford to be having that attitude with club owners? Eventually, word will get around between all the clubs that he's unmanageable. And that, for me, means that he will always end up just being nothing more than a mid-league manager. And personally, I don't think the Premier League is going to be any lesser for missing him this year. But let us know in the comments below what you think of Roberto De Zerbi. And let me know in the comments if you agree whether you think he's overrated. As always, thanks for watching and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button at the end.